we hear in the mainstream media, especially the 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 media that is controlled by companies that want to sell food, that you will lose muscle mass if you don't eat. Well, that's nonsense. That's complete nonsense. Hi, guys. Today we have a very special guest. An engineer and former senior manager at Apple is an investor in real estate and biotech startups with a track record extending for decades. I hope you enjoy this one. Let's meet Fernando Weires. So biohacking is, is really a, a buzzword that has caught on over the last uh, several years, especially, uh, uh, I guess, evangelized by a guy called Dave Asprey, self-called yeah. the, the father of biohacking. And it really, it's a way to change the environment around you and also inside you to give you more energy and achieve longevity. You know, I, I, I joke with people and I tell them that I want to die young, but live a long time. And that really encompasses that, that concept <laughs> <laughs> that you want to have lots of energy yeah. um, and you you don't want to have that vision of being an old guy and, and not having uh, social life and not able to do what you want to do. So biohacking is a way to really take care of your body, just like you hack a computer, you hack your biology and you learn how it works and uh, what works for you specifically and empowers you to to do better and achieve a better version of yourself. That's how I look at it. Do you think this, uh, this is becoming increasingly important? Or if you think of it like from a statistical point of view, like it's still a niche of people that are interested in improvement? I think it's both. Um, it's it's becoming popular, I think mostly because the technology is allowing it to become popular. Nowadays, there are so many self-tests. You know, we're, we're both here in Portugal and I was happy to, to have uh, sure. uh, met with you again here in Europe. Uh, but in, in the U.S., uh, I think a little bit more than here, there's this concept of doing tests, self-tests and, and all kinds of lab diagnosis and understanding those ranges is becoming more and more popular. There's a lot of companies that can measure your glucose level, that can measure your heartbeats. There are devices like the Apple Watch that can uh, monitor your mm -hmm. sleep and let you know how you're doing. So there's all of these parameters that allow you to self-guide, to really give you a, a glimpse of how your, if you are a car, how your engine is running. Uh, so I do see, obviously in my area, I do see quite a bit of people that are, are getting into uh, this, this biohacking idea, which is, which is, I think, very empowering and to some degree a little uh, intimidating to, to some doctors that, uh, you know, in the white coat want to tell you everything and, and they seem to... Uh, to not uh, embrace this as, as much, but there are some, especially functional doctors, that do because they they think the power of it of of, of it coming along. Yeah, we talked about this because the doctors they they focus on the symptoms and not the root cause, and that's precisely where the underlying problem is. Because if someone is depressed, why is he depressed? You don't give him antidepressants. You need to understand what's the motive. Right. Yeah. You know, if you're hiding the symptoms, it doesn't it doesn't really address the the main problem. And uh, energy itself is, is, is so complex in the body. And that's kind of the root of everything. It's like upstream, what creates, what creates self, uh, a feeling of, 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 of well-being. Uh, so if you can address, you can address the root causes. And that's, that's why I like biohacking, because it looks at um, a concept uh, called inflammation, which most people you know, hear so much, and it has become a buzzword, everything's inflammation, but it's true. <laughs> that as, as we're exposed to toxins and, and bad diets and so on, our body responds by really saying, you know, what is going on? I, I'm going to, just like if you have a cut, I'm going to send all of these messengers and, and these, these self-repair cells to take care of that. But if that happens in a chronic way inside the body, we live in a state of inflammation that eventually will create uh, cancer and you create all kinds of uh, heart disease and, and, and immune dis uh, self uh, immune diseases um, that will will turn s somebody uh, in, into a uh, uh, a fountain of of uh, uh, a source of, of of income for doctors I should say that only addresses the symptoms. It's a sad way, but it's unfortunately what most doctors have been trained to be, and very little has been paid attention to nutrition. As a matter of fact, if you look at a typical uh, you know, uh, career academic uh, development of a doctor, very little is attention is given to nutrition in the root causes. Uh, a lot of it has to do with pharmaceutical companies, uh, you know, having having a, a large influence in how 
diseases get treated. So going back to biohacking, it gives, it, it, I, I feel great by taking more charge of my body because it allows me to get to the root cause more often and not so much get distracted by the symptoms because that's really, it's really a big distraction. There's one point that is important and to your point, I think it starts with you first becoming self-aware because if not, you'll keep going like blind, blindsided. But the, from the moment you decide something is wrong, I need to fix this. Mm -hmm. This is where the education comes in. Right. You have to, ha you have to be curious, honestly. Um, if, if people are curious and they want to do better, it's just like the concept of self-help in many ways. You know, why do people get into meditation? Why do people learn and, 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 and sure. uh, read books? Uh, this is the same thing with our body. It's very complex in many ways, the, the way that we generate energy and, and the way that, uh, that we age, but it's also very simple. I'm a, a big follower of one of the top experts in longevity. His name is uh, David Sinclair. Um, he is a, a professor at Harvard, and he's also, uh, he heads a, a uh, uh, longevity uh, organization that has a lot of followers. Um, and he talks about how interesting it is that living a long time, longevity, is really misunderstood. People think of, of, uh, of human beings as having a set limit, you know, maybe 100 years, 120 years. But if you really get down to it and, and understand the biology and the chemistry and the, and the physics behind it, we're all made out of the same stuff, hydrogen, carbon, you know, oxygen. It, 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 those, those atoms in a simplistic way, they never get old. You know, they, they were generated starting in the sun and then in, in supernovas and so on, where, where bigger um, elements were created. Uh, they don't really get old. Um, so the hardware itself doesn't get old. So if you separate the body with software and hardware, what Sinclair talks about is that it's, it's really, uh, longevity is, is an issue of, or aging is an issue of a software issue. And when he boils it down to what it what uh, what it comes down to be is that the replication, the DNA, the the, the process by which cells get replicated through uh, through the DNA copying process gets corrupted, just like entropy changes everything in the world. Everything gets disorganized as we go by. If we can address the issue of of this error errors that appear as time goes on then we can certainly live a lot longer. There's plenty of animals in the kingdom that live hundreds of years. So there is no issue with the hardware itself. And it's, it's unbelievable what's happening in this space. I, I, uh, I, I told you that I've started to, to embark in another uh, venture with uh, biomedical engineering. So I'm, I'm taking uh, classes at Arizona State University for a biomedical engineering degree. Uh, and it reminds me and brings back to, to the basics of, of how uh, wonderful it is to be able to, to uh, um, understand the simplicity in how to manipulate through technologies like CRISPR, which allows you to do gene editing, combined with basics that our you know, ancestors told us that should eat well, you should exercise, you should sleep at the right times, you have a proper circad circadian rhythm. If you put it all together with the with the latest technologies, we're going to live a long, long time. They already have studies and, and they're doing experiments with yeasts and, and mice and in people as well, where they can stop aging, they can reverse aging. Uh, it will happen to humans uh, in our lifetime within, it depends on who you ask, within five to 10 years. If you listen to Tony Robbins or Peter Diamantes or any of these guys that are involved in this tight circle of people that want to prolong life and, and want to really change the way uh, age is looked at. This is all coming and, and it's going to be, and it, it is very exciting. You'll be able to go to a, a clinic and uh, take a, a series of, of steps, including some gene, you know, stem cells or gene editing and, and basic things um, that will allow us to reverse aging. And you're 60, you say, okay, I'm, you know, I'm going to do a, a, a treatment now, and I'll, I'll become 30. And then, uh, you know, a few years from now, I'll do another one. And I'll, I'll, I'll live for a much longer time. And it's, it, is, it is here now. People have no idea, you know, the biology is, is linear, right? But technology is exponential. 
So when it changes, it changes in such a rapid way that people cannot, you know, grasp how quickly things happen. And again, besides besides the the food and like daily habits, what are some some tech companies that you have been seeing that look promising, given the current state of art and something that they can actually can achieve to accomplish, like to make the the companies work within their lifetime? We know that there are a lot of companies. It's it's hard to pick. I think it's a uh, to me, a better way to look at it is 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 the communication nowadays through uh, collaboration through uh, the the internet and and people working in remote remote parts of the world. They are able to really kind of stand on each other's shoulder to develop new technologies. There's a ton of work being done in stem cells, and that's an area that I I will be uh, uh, focusing on in my degree. But there's a ton of of work to first address uh, diseases with, with CRISPR. And CRISPR is, is a wonderful technology. You think of it as word editing for, 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 uh, for your, your DNA sequence, for your, for your genes. And you can turn on certain genes, turn off certain genes. You can, you can make changes that allow certain diseases, some genetic diseases to be changed. And eventually we'll be able to turn on specific genes that give us more energy or give us uh, a, a better ratio of mitochondria, which are the energy uh, powerhouses in our cells. Uh, so companies that can do that um, allow will allow uh, life to be significantly changed. Um, I am personally invested in in a company called Age Rate. I'm an advisor to them, and in this company, it's a Canadian company, and they do a, a blood test where they analyze your cellular age. And as you know, we have a regular chronological, chronological age that we can measure by our driver's license and when we were born. But our lifestyle makes the biggest difference. As a matter of fact, depends on who you ask. These are experts. They'll say that it's 70, 80, sometimes 90% of how long we'll live and how well we'll live is due to our environment. So when people say, oh, you know, I have bad genetics and so on and so forth. Well, that's 10%, 20% of the story. Sure. So it's, it's actually sense. exciting. It's it's really exciting. So companies that can do that, this one in particular, and then just to complete the answer, one more that I'm also involved with that I can speak to is a company that uh, called TechFit that uh, does uh, implants. That they're they're surgical implants for people that have cancer or have accidents, and they use high tech uh, scans. And then they produce exact matches for replacements in the body. And their vision is tremendous. They're, they want to put 3D printers. These are living printers that, that can do tissue uh, and, and also uh, titanium implants into people's bodies. And, and with that idea, which is something that Elon Musk is, is doing in one of his uh, ventures as well, is Neuralink, which is trying to really yeah. talk to the brain and combine technology with biology. Uh, so, so to me, the, 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 the idea of it one day becoming totally uh, technological is, is a little bit far-fetched. It's gonna be kind of a, a mesh. Uh, so age rate gives you a way to know how you're doing. If you make changes to your diet and, and, and uh, your lifestyle, you can tell if you're doing better or not by looking at your cellular age. And we're certainly going to be with TechFit and other companies going to be able to change parts of our body and improve these uh, these parts. There's a lot of companies doing organ regeneration. It's a tremendous work. Diogo, I'll tell you, I I sign up to uh, Peter Diamantes, which is which is a doctor, is, is involved in all kinds of projects um, to to really accelerate the uh, the progress of humanity. That's really how he sees it. Um, you know, he, he, he talks about uh, ways uh, to, to accelerate our, our learning in, in within 30 years that we'll be able to do things today that people think 100 years ago were not possible. Uh, so there is there's a, just a ton going on. There's, there's a, lot of, uh, a lot of excitement. And uh, I receive, uh, just to complete the thought, I, I receive weekly updates on the developments of, of AI in, in this space, in, in the longevity space. And it's mind boggling what, what happens. It's hard to keep up. As a matter of fact, you can't keep up with so much. One, one study, one, 
one uh, new molecule that gets combined with another one and another group takes over and starts looking at how this can help with this particular disease or Alzheimer's or that or, or this or that. I'm going back to David Sinclair, the, the Harvard professor, one thing he mentions is it's fantastic. It's, it's very powerful. Once you fix this idea of, of fixing and looking at aging as a disease, and you figure out how the duplication or replication of cells has less error so that you can live longer, you can fix a whole bunch of diseases. And he claims, and I believe him, that it's a lot easier to fix, fix ageism than it is Alzheimer's or cancer. Simply because if you maintain our cells in a younger state, a lot of the uh, diseases that come with old age, old age, they disappear. And the process of aging and the process of really energy creation is very similar, almost exactly the same between all living organisms. So it is a lot simpler in many ways to, to address that. So that's why I believe it's, it's, it's happening in our lifetime for sure. I think a, a big role is coming from education because I had this interesting talk once with Jim Rogers, the founder of Quantum Fund with George Soros. Mm -hmm. And he, he told me that a better pro if you go against the establishment, let's say cut sugar now, without education, you'll go broke because people at this point, they don't know any better, so they want it. Right. But if people start getting educated, they start steering clear from some types of products. And now now they start they themselves are the disruptors of the industry because they're causing like sales going down. Right. So industries like Tyson and all those guys, they need to adjust to what people want because otherwise they'll go bankrupt. Right. And I think these initi initiatives are important. And a guy like Dr. Burke, like with all those like small skit videos are super, super useful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And before we didn't have any doctors because they only focused on like, like treating symptoms. And now this guy comes in and showing people like, if you're eating this crap, this is not good for you. Like try this one. And then well, this works. Let me keep listening right. to this guy. Right. No, fantastic. Dr. Berg, I think we've, we've talked about him before. He's an, ex an excellent example of somebody that just breaks it down in small videos and gives you specific ideas of how inflammation happens and how you can reduce your, your sugar load and what happens when you eat sugar and this and that. There's another set of YouTube videos that you might uh, have heard about. It's called WIL, What I've Learned. Uh, they also have, they have longer videos and they explain uh, the role of um, different type, types of meat and carbon emissions and what happens when you eat a lot of cholesterol and he is, uh, he's phenomenal how he breaks it down. He's a very good communicator, so I suggest people uh, take a look at, at that. It's W-I-L. He also has short videos that just gives you, you know, a minute or two of a particular subject. It's very easy to, to digest. But you're right, education, once, once there's enough of a momentum, like you mentioned, for sugar, you see a lot of big companies creating sugar-free products. Unfortunately, a lot of them will add even worse products <laughs> sweeteners to them and they claim to be sugar free so but then it it's it's a tough fight you know the in the industry they have to make profits especially the bigger the company so uh, removing uh the the sweet taste of things or making things slightly harder to eat or it requires a little more preparation uh brings down profits uh, and you know so it reduces sales so their intention is not so much, is, is not health, is really to, to make sales. But if enough people pay attention, I see some change in sugar. I see a lot more people aware of how sugar is really a poison and a drug um, and, and how it's prevalent everywhere. But you see a lot of companies, you know, reducing that and, and people have to watch out for, for what that is. Not fall into the, the trap that happened 20 years ago when they uh, vilified fat and not understanding there's different kinds of fats yeah. and there's very good fat. Like yeah, remember the old fats. commercials? Which one? The, for, for no, uh, the, the old commercials, you had like and... the, like a couple in the kitchen. Yeah. The couple in the kitchen and saying, this is the low fat and like completely exactly. opposite of, and they start discovering today. Exactly. And they, they added sugar and they removed fat and they added sugar. <laughs> and that, you'd but, see it. You would see like pouring all over the Exactly. But the, but the interesting thing is that like, this is a perfect example is that, what actually happens in the body when you understand chemistry, right? When you understand biology, when you eat a lot of sugar, especially fructose, fructose is like the, the biggest villain of all. 
it goes directly to your liver. It get your your liver gets completely flooded with this with this uh, fructose, and it has no no alternative but to create fat from that sugar that comes. So when they advertise fat free, like you see a whole pound of sugar, if you eat a whole ton of sugar, uh, again fructose is worse than sucrose, which is table sugar, but but it, it, in some ways it's similar. It will turn into fat. So you're much, much, much better off eating coconut uh, oil in, in whatever you do, or MCT oil or olive oil of high quality, uh, even though it has a lot of calories. We should discuss calories in a little while, but uh, you are much better off eating good quality fats than, than the sugar, because the sugar is what's going to make you fat, you know, not the, not the fats. So it's, uh, it's, it's kind of an interesting thing. Do you think there's a big difference between the current state of art of food in the US versus Europe? Because one of the videos that I saw from Berg, he was talking with this scientist and she's in Europe and she was telling, uh, telling, trying to explain to him that in Europe, there are several things that are not common in the US. What do you think? I, I agree to a large degree. You know, we're in Lisbon right now. Um, where the tourists are, there's some Western influence, so it's it's not as good. But if you just go a little bit farther to more local communities, uh, you will eat a lot more real food. You know, people that prepare foods uh, with uh, with uh, olive oil instead of the terrible vegetable oils that are prevalent everywhere in the U.S. So that's right there is a big difference. In Europe, you will see a lot more, in, especially in Portugal, you see a lot more olive oil. And even when you cook with olive oil, it's better if you don't, but, it, but even if you cook with olive oil, you're not going to see it becoming uh, a poison or reacting with oxygen like polyunsaturated uh, uh, saturated fats do, vegetable oils and seed oils and that sort of thing. So you do eat healthier here. Uh, I, I, I've seen that, I think, in, in general. The flour that is used in, in a lot of, even, even in, in uh, Padaria Portuguesa, I just... I was just there uh, this morning and, and they have a, a little flyer and, and they, they say that, that their flower is, they're more ancient flowers. They're not bastardized as much as flower in the U.S. Unfortunately, the U.S. also has incredible, incredible uh, allowances for poisons. Uh, potassium bromate. I don't know if I mentioned that to you before, but I remember when I was a kid in Brazil, uh, the local FDA in Brazil banned potassium bromate that was used to make bread, okay? And this was like 30 years ago because it caused cancer. They have studies that shows it caused cancer. Sure. A few years ago, I was in the U.S. in a farmer's market. I was just looking at some breads and some, you know, vegetables and things. I look at a bread. I just, I always look at the ingredients. I look in the back, potassium bromate. I said, are you kidding me? I mean, how, I mean... Like it's this is being banned in Europe. It's being banned, and it's it's very similar uh, to uh, chocolate and 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 coffee. There's stories of coffee that sometimes gets rejected in Europe, uh, but gets sold in the U.S. because the U.S. has uh, more relaxed rules, or in other ways, they have more uh, industry influence. So it's a paradox in many ways in the U.S. There's pockets where you can eat very well if you go to Whole Foods or if you eat to, if you go to organic restaurants. The selection is actually much wider than uh, in Portugal, let's say, or let's say in Europe, but in Portugal. Uh, but at the same time, most of the U.S. is is junk food city. I've traveled extensively and lived in many different states in the U.S. And people buy a lot of their groceries from convenience stores, you know, and it's it's just junk, processed foods. So it's much much easier to get fat and get sick in the U.S. for sure. The U.S. Uh, just there was a, uh, a study that just came out about longevity uh, in the U.S. It has it has come down the 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 life life uh, expectancy has come down over the last two or three years. This is despite all of the incredible innovations that we've seen in medicine. This is because it's still eating crap. Bad. Yeah, yeah. So so. Normally, you would see that life expectancy keep keep going up because there's so much new developments. But the inflammation created by all of these terrible um, life choices is so much greater that life expectancy is going down. That is that is eye opening. 
and you know doesn't get enough attention in, in the US. So another thing here in in Lisbon is that I I personally exercise a lot more just walking. You know, I don't have a car. I I walk and you know I, I get more um, uh, normal exercise without having to go to a gym, you know, <laughs> so that I can get my exercise. So it's a healthier lifestyle in many ways. So. And I think people see this when they come to Portugal because that it's a different environment, a different feel, and people like start like seeing how the kind of the current status is. And I right. think people, especially younger generations, they they're more. Well, I think that's a mix, but there, there are a lot of people like more aware of like organic stuff because there's a market for it at this time. It's not as big as both of us would like to be, right? But I think that people start becoming aware. What do you think? Yeah, I, unfortunately, that gets contradicted also by the large amount of smoking that happens. I mean, that all, always gets me. You know, it's it's like you walk down the street. There's so many people smoking. You don't see that in the U.S. Uh, it's it's just it just boggles my mind even young people I mean, with so much data with so much that we've known with so much oh, so, so but here in portugal the same people yeah. in portugal smoke more than in the u.s people oh that my you god smoke as well. a, lot, a lot more a lot but more. the vaping crap or, or like actually the no the, the actual actual cigarettes uh, i do see quite a bit of vaping in the u.s you see quite a bit of vaping um but you know you, you gotta you gotta under, understand that that smoking you, you separate nicotine. Nicotine has its issues, and 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 even as a nootropic, it can work well in small quantities. There's some studies on that, but what happens with smoking is there is I think five thousand different pollutants that come in and create inflammation. It's the quickest way to make a person older and more inflamed and prone to all kinds of diseases. So when you see smoking. That is a huge red flag. It it, it it trumps everything else. Somebody can take all of the pills and do all of the CRISPR editing in the world, and if they smoke, it's not gonna it's not gonna work. It's just the body just can't can't over overwhelm the amount of toxins that come in. So I do see quite a bit of of that vaping. The problem with vaping is twofold. It it contains a lot more nicotine than regular cigarettes, a lot more, like ten times more. So that overwhelms our receptors uh, in the in in our brain and in our body, and that is very addictive. and And we don't know what the long term consequences of that are because we haven't had it for for long enough. And also, they add other chemicals into into vaping, and it's very easy to to mix with different fluids and 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 have these these chemicals. Which, again, our body has no option when he sees a foreign molecule coming in that we haven't recognized in our evolution for thousands of years, it will become inflammation in our body. because so our body doesn't know what to do with it. It doesn't know if it should process it. doesn't know if it's food. doesn't know if it, it does. It just doesn't know. So, well, let me attack it. And it creates inflammation. So well, that's the thing. Companies, established companies, if they want to get a market, they're going to go after kids first because kids are idiots. So they're starting out with them because they don't know any better and they're trying to like the girl thing and trying to look cool. Exactly. But they are getting, but and companies are getting in there because I, I don't see companies getting to these older people like 50s and 60s start smoking now. Makes no sense. I'm no. not saying that doesn't happen because it does. But it's but very, it makes more sense to low barriers of entry, which would be like younger kids. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There's plenty of studies that show that it's, you know, if you don't start by 20, it's very unlikely that you're going to start smoking later yeah. on. You know, it's just, there's, you don't, I don't know, it's just the psychology doesn't work. Um, but yeah, that's, that's one big drawback that I see here. Not only with with the Portuguese, but also with tourists. You know, as you know, there's a lot of tourists in, in Lisbon, and uh, you do see smoking uh, being being so prevalent, uh, which is which is uh, a big concern. I think it, you know, don't know what uh, what the regulations are, but I think it should be looked at a little bit more for sure. One thing one one thing I noticed is is about meat because I, we talked about this like last week. I only eat the organic and it's uh, for people that don't know, like we have like this seal certified organic. It does say like the whole like uh, official stuff. Yeah. But one thing that I noticed, especially with meat, it's because it needs, uh, it's not only organic, but it's like, it needs to be like a certain degrees of like uh, finished organic, like there's a so sort, all sorts of stages and it starts to get, I wouldn't say confusing, but you're not sure. Because if you like listen to Berg's videos and trying to get the same thing here, 
well, I only have organic. Mm -hmm. And I don't think if it's organic, it's completely organic across the board, like when the, the, the cow is, is born until they, they, they kill the cow. Right. I don't know if at some stage there are some like uh, parts that it's not organic or it's the whole thing. Because in the US, you mentioned this, it's not the whole thing. You need to make sure it starts organic and ends the whole thing when they actually have the cows like in open fields eating grass and not, not that um, processed crap. Right. Yeah, it is confusing uh, when you're talking. I think you you you're you're mentioning the the whole grass fed process. Um, yes, and grass fed finished. The exactly. Two steps. Yeah, yeah. If, if you, uh, it's very common for a cow in the U.S. Even though they claim it to be grass fed, that they 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 feed the grass like it should, like it should, but then over the last period of their life, they will feed grain so that it fattens up a little bit. Um, yeah. and it gives you and it gives you a different taste uh, uh, format. So yeah, you need to know the difference between these two uh, and the degrees of goodness, right? If you get a grass a fed and grass finished, completely uh, pasture organic farm, you know that's beautiful. You're gonna get a a a, uh, a profile in the meat that is gonna be extremely beneficial with lots of nutrients, lots of, lots of omega three. Uh, uh, amino acids and 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 it's going to be wonderful uh, for for the uh, for the body, uh, as opposed to the industrialized meat, where mostly in the U.S. and I imagine here too, uh, they pump them with hormones so that they get fatter faster, and they pump them with antibiotics because they live in terrible conditions, and that's going to create inflammation in the animal, and then right back to us and pesticides and Roundup and glyphosate and all of that that, that goes into what is non-organic. Um, it is confusing. I see that in eggs as well. In the US, I don't know, I've seen a chart that's like 12 different qualifications for eggs. I mean, you have to study this stuff you know, to know. <laughs> you, know, you know what I usually do? I, I go by, by price. You know, that's usually yeah. a good a good way. You just, you pick, you know, that's the, 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 the most expensive one. Yeah, exactly. You, you know, it's, it's treated better. So it's, it's a quick way uh, to go. There is an app. Um, actually, I'm not going to recommend that app because they make too many mistakes. So I'm not going to mention it, but um, and it works in the U S only, but yeah, it is a little bit confused. That's why it's important to know uh, that the whole concept of biohacking is, is really to, to, to understand the body and understand what, what you're eating does to your body um uh, the, the 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 additives that they put in what processed food does what and people i you know i am i am a, a fan so i spend a lot of time on this so um for the average person it, it takes time and it took me a lot of time to understand the, the differences and, and the choices that are made um, but i am optimistic that i see uh, a lot more awareness of people that I talk to, they understand intermittent fasting, for example. They know they know the concept, or or a, a ketogenic diet, or uh, the benefits of having ketones, run, you know, being used as fuel. And and in the in YouTube, like you mentioned, Dr. Berg, and, and there's 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 a lot more that are that are similar uh, to him that talk about what to do for particular conditions without going into the pharmaceuticals. So you know, I think that it, it's it's there's there's a lot of reason for optimism. I think for me, I can tell you that for me, solve the solve the problem. I'm not going to advocate like 100% because it's not how it works, but it's much better than because I do intermittent, I do a prolonged fasting. Yeah, so I eat, I use, eat, started eating once a day, now I eat twice because I my body's like needs it now. Uh -huh. But it's the same concept. It's like not eating like and getting yourself in a different, it's just different and it works better. Your sure. intestines and all that, like they're clear, like the body, like you have a different, you'll feel better when you do it. Yeah. Intermittent fasting, Diogo, is fr from, I've been, I've been studying this for, for eight years. Intermittent fasting is by far the best biohack that we can do. And it's by far the cheapest because, you know, you're not eating a period <laughs> right. of time, right? Um it is thank you <laughs> exactly yeah. and and the industry hates it because yeah. <laughs> they're selling less um but it is fantastic i do it i my regiment is i i don't eat breakfast so 
it, it doesn't really matter. Like you, you have what works for you and other people have what they work for. But the concept sure. is, is very simple. You have a period of time where you're not eating, right? So I don't eat breakfast normally on weekdays. So that I only eat dinner and then it'll be like 16, 18 hours before I eat again. So sure. it's, it, it gives me, it gives my body a chance to run that, to use all of that glyco, glucose that is, that is running in, the, in, in my system and glycogen, which is glucose stored in, in, in muscles. And then it starts the process of producing ketones and burning fat. Uh, I've gotten to a point where, because I, I don't do only breakfast and I also do 40 hour fasting on, on Monday. So I'll eat Sunday night, skip the whole day on Monday and then eat on Tuesday afternoon. Sure. I actually, actually measure my ketone level levels on Monday night. And I already see that I'm in nutritional ketosis, which is there's, there's a level that you can, you can measure that you can tell that you're starting to, to produce ketones in the body. This happens because I am already metabolically flexible. My body can quickly switch sure. between running glucose to, uh, to, to, uh, to fats. You get ketones are, are wonderful when you, when you do intermittent fasting, uh, or if you do a prolonged fasting, um, you, you get even more benefits and obviously for a longer period of time. But ketones are now in the last two years, there's studies that come that explain how ketones are really a uh, informational molecule, not so much that they make your mitochondria, your, your power uh, generators work more efficiently, but they actually it, it decouples them. It makes more of them get created. So it reduces the load on each particular mitochondria, reducing the, the free radicals, the bad stuff that gets produced when we breathe and live. So ketones really help us live a longer time. It reduces our appetite. I've seen that uh, myself, and there's plenty of studies that, that show this. Sure. Evolutionarily, it's, it's a, it, there's a good explanation for that. When we were starving and hunting and trying to find food, uh, we, we needed to be uh, alert and and not thinking about food and, and hungry at that time we need to really you didn't focus. need to eat yes yes you need to be focused and that's really what it gives you it gives you it turns it, it's an, a great ep, epigenetic uh enhancer it turns on a lot of genes that allow you to be alert for a shorter period of time um, it makes you live longer as i as i explained it's a in it, it makes your brain works better it's a cognitive enhance, enhancement and also, intermittent fasting does something wonderful called autophagy, and people should look that up. Dr. Berg talks about that, and that's a, there's a lot of studies. Uh, Jason Fung is another name that people should know. He's a, he's a, a yeah, nephrologist. A doctor. Yeah. yeah, he's excellent. He talks about uh, the whole concept of, of uh, uh, with graphs and lots of data, what happens when you go into fasting. But um, the, 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 the benefits of autophagy are wonderful. Autophagy means literally self-eating. Uh, and this is a process that the body goes through when we are, are starving mode, fasting mode. Uh, the cells that are not working so well, they're not, they're kind of zombie cells. They're kind of just not uh, doing their job and just taking resources. Just uh, he's part of, of a group called the Diet Doctor uh, website. And he shows charts and, and data on how uh, our body adapts going from glucose to glycogen to uh, to ketones and, and fats. He also has data on uh, studies that he've done with uh, prisoners back in World War II, where when they were giving a little bit of food, they would be extremely hungry, um, as opposed to no food at all. And their body would essentially um, switch over, metabol the, the metabolism would switch over to ketones and, and they would be uh, satiated uh, more quickly. So it's fantastic what, what ketones can do. So, you know, we can talk for a long time about that, but going back to, to the basic idea is that intermittent fasting, which as I, as I mentioned, I practice in, in various ways, along with a longer five to seven day uh, water fast twice a year for even more benefits and for autophagy cleanup and, and so on. Um, is by far the biggest biohack. And it helps maintain body weight. It helps clean the body, helps detox, helps you know with epigenetic uh, uh, gene programming for longer, for longevity. Uh, it, it's just fantastic. 
Uh, unfortunately, the industry, as I mentioned earlier, hates it because it it costs it, it costs nothing and, it, and you save money when you're doing intermittent fasting. But he can. Uh, doctor uh, Fung talks about. Uh, he's a clinic doctor. He's cured many people with type two diabetes by just switching diets and doing fasting. Uh, and it's really simple. You know, the concept is is simple with intermittent fasting, where, where you're drying up all of that glucose that is in the body and starting to burn fat. Unfortunately, our sedentary lifestyle has made it so that we have food 24 hours a day in our refrigerator. And everywhere you go, you have food. And it's, it's a terrible thing. It's the more convenient the life is, you know, there's this, this uh, uh, concept of... of what, do you, what do you think? I heard about, I heard about cancer because cancer, cancer doesn't do well. Yeah, I've heard that studies where uh, where cancer cells were were uh, deprived of of uh, glucose and and they 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 died they 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 could not process uh, maybe the the Krebs cycle what what creates energy uh, for uh, a cancer cell is is slightly different and it uh, it works in in uh, much better with glucose. As a matter of fact, there are protocols. There's a a, a group called the Gerson Group. Uh, uh, people should look it up um, in the U.S. and actually in, in Mexico, where they have a protocol for people that have cancer, where they go into a, a complete detox with uh, vegetable juices, and uh, and also they they uh, they uh, are starved of of glucose, and that helps quite a bit. So, ketogenic diet uh, also prevents seizures, and you know this this has been they they've seen this uh, with uh, with with kids, you know you know, decades ago. So there's a lot of benefits. You should do, shouldn't do it all the time. You shouldn't be on a ketogenic state all the time, but cyclically it's a great place to be. And I recommend that above everything else be before anybody takes any supplements, anything they should, they should consider intermittent fasting. It's just a way to reset the body and give a break. You know, our pancreas has to create insulin to, to take in, to unlock the cells so that the, the glucose can come in well, it, it takes a toll for it to create insulin all the time. So if you're eating all the time, your body's, your, your pancreas is creating insulin. Your, your whole system is inundated with insulin. That's what type 2 diabetes, diabetes is. It's an insulin resistance. It's too much of it. And unfortunately, the American Diabetes Association, which is a terrible association, recommends uh, insulin shots to fix that. Well, that makes it, it's completely the opposite of what should be done. Dr. Berg talks about that all the time and many, many others. Jason Fung talks about that all the time. Um, it's it's incredible. <laughs> yeah, it creates yeah. dependency instead of it doesn't. Again, we talked about symptoms. Uh, you're fixing the symptom. Somebody cannot take glucose because they're in, in, in resistant. Well, let's give more of insulin so that you know it overcomes the cells. The cells already saying, "Oh my God, I have too much." Well, let's give more. <laughs> yeah, that helps. If you're paying attention, it makes no sense. Why why give insulin? Makes sense if you're trying to make money. And I think and I think people. When people start be coming back to what we were talking about earlier on, I think when people start becoming aware, but that's the key point, they becoming aware and they start with education. Right, right. That is, I think that is the key. Somebody becomes curious about not just listening to what gets pushed on them, but learning, biohacking, learning how their body works. Uh, and and the, the companies that are creating you know, there's a there's a company called Levels. Uh, we mentioned talked about some technology. There's another company called Levels that is a glucose monitoring company, and you put a patch uh, in an app, and it 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 does real time reporting of what your insulin response is to your your you know some foods are what we call have a higher glycemic index. They they require the body to create more insulin. You know, carbs are are the 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 ones that require the most insulin, but people will respond to carbs differently, depending on their body, depending on their blood type, depending on their metabolism, blah, blah, blah. So by monitoring that, you can adjust it. And uh, some people, uh, Peter Diamantis is one of them, and, and David Sinclair, I mentioned their names before, they they are investors in levels and they use it. I don't use it myself. I'll, I'll give you a reason for that. But they uh, report that when they eat bread by itself, they have a very high insulin response. But when they mix it with olive oil, both of them have a much subdued, more subdued response. So they know that if if they mix those two, 
they will not get into the yo-yo syndrome where, where you eat carbs and then your insulin goes way up and then you crash then you you know then you have to eat again and so on so having these uh, technologies will will be tremendously important i'm looking for the day and as you know i worked for apple for for 10 years i'm looking for the day where the watch will be able to monitor glucose levels I don't know, and even if I was working for Apple, I, I wouldn't know if they're working on that because I'm not in that area. I was a chip designer, not, not in the sensor uh, department hardware. Uh, but it's feasible, just like they do now. They can measure oxygen levels, VO2 levels, via laser uh, lights that are shone into the veins that are that sit underneath the watch. If they can figure out how to uh, ID the glucose molecule or or a variant that or uh, some uh, signature from the glucose me uh, molecule, then they can measure the glucose level that is running in the blood. And I fully uh, believe that that will come in the next, and that, that will be a big changer when you have something non-invasive, because I think levels is invasive and it has to, it has to go into your, your bloodstream. Um, but a watch will not be, or any sort of, of laser diode LED diode uh, would would be fantastic, and people would know right away. They eat X Y Z, their glucose level shoots up. Well, they will not eat X Y Z. They will moderate it, and that will make uh, diabetes uh, very much more controllable than it is now. It gives people power to do that. So it comes back to education, technology with education. You know. Now, what are your thoughts about athletes and losing muscle mass and the bodybuilding part on or or, or those people that like need to like from one end like the, the fast uh, like uh, push pull thing and strength immediately and the other group like the marathon runners and all that where does that ketogenic fits in a big misconception that maybe is what you're you're referring to which is we hear in the mainstream media especially the 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 media that is controlled by companies that want to sell food that you will lose muscle mass if you don't eat. You know, if you get into a ketogenic state, your body will lose muscle mass and you will thin down to nothing. And if you're an athlete and, you know, you, you're going to lose all of your muscle and because your body doesn't have any food to eat, well, that's nonsense. That's complete nonsense. And again, you listen to the experts like Jason Fung, um, he will explain in very plain terms, he says, if any of this was true, we would not be alive today as a species. You know, it, it is... There is a small percentage of, of muscle that gets lost when, especially when you, when you are an athlete, when you have lots of muscles, you, your, your body has a lot of it available, um, the mass is available, that you will lose part of it. But by far, our body would prefer to go into our fat stores and burn those up before it burns muscle. When you are in a starving uh, situation, ketogenic diet included, um, so it's it's completely uh, false and, and misleading to say that we should not do fasting uh, if if uh, if we do we're going to lose muscle mass. It's not true. We wouldn't be here today if that was true because our ancestors, many many for for thousands of years, did not eat all the time. That's obvious obviously the case. So they survived, and it's because that's how our body works. The, the, the fat stores is where we go to for energy when we run our glucose. That's how it works. Unfortunately, nowadays, people just get lots of reserved fat and never use that fat. And that's where a lot of the issues come. Diabetes being the, the, by far the biggest killer. You know, it's not an epidemic, but it's a slow moving uh, silent killer that, that this destroys a combination of obesity and, and diabetes. It's a lifestyle problem. That's all it is. Not type one, type two, which is really you know the 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 cause of the the result of junk food given, and sedentary lifestyles. Given that you've been in different countries, do you see there's a people people more open from to to this type of diet in different countries? You know, it, I think the answer is is modulated by where I've been and the people that I've been around. Um, you know, like last year, I, I spent a whole month in Estonia. I spent, you know, a month in, in Colombia, in, in Brazil, in Spain, in, in England, and uh, in the U.S., certainly. 
Um, the the people that I'm surrounded with, obviously, they have a higher understanding of of how that works. Um, but I think in general, because of communication and social media, it's much easier to get the message across. And the trick is to get the good message across. Because at the same time that we talk about Dr. Berg, there's a hundred other guys that will give you the, the opposite. And they'll tell you that you know fats are, are still bad, but they don't differentiate between different kinds of fats or if it's industrialized or, or you know, it's, it, it's, uh, it, it's, a, it's a fight. Um, and you hope that the, the, the good word comes across in, in podcasts like yours and, sure. and, and people listen to it. In books, a book that I'm going to recommend highly, uh, along with uh, the people that we mentioned, is uh, Bulletproof. Is is the, the Bulletproof Diet itself, which is something that I've yeah, been doing sense. for a long time. Also, Life Force is a newer book, I think last year or two, from uh, Tony Robbins, that includes Peter Diamantes and, and a lot of the people that we're talking about with lots of new technologies. And they talk about uh, interventions that people can do on their own with amazing results amazing results um so i think that there is a i think there's a, there's a there's a good momentum you know happening um there's still quite a bit of the old thinking because there's a lot of money involved and there's a lot of people that don't want to lose their reputation people that have built uh their careers on promoting fat-free diets for example you know how would us feel if we were for 30 years promoting a certain kind of diet and then you know, even though we we see results and we realize that uh, that's no longer the the case, um, to go back and tell thousands of people that we were completely wrong and some of them died because of we were wrong. You know, it's it's a tough it's a, it's a tough call. But yeah. going back to your question, I see people in Estonia as a faraway place that I've been to that are very aware of intermittent fasting and, and ketones and you know biohacking. Um, I've, I've been to conferences and I, I'll probably do a couple of conferences, you know, I'm going to Estonia again this year, uh, where I'll talk about biohacking and, and you'll see lots of people in that audience. And I was in, in England, I was in London, you in, know, in a, in a, uh, a biohacking summit. And it, it's amazing the, the understanding that happens. So, um, that circle of knowledge is, is very powerful. So it's very tight, uh, you know, with the people that we that we've mentioned, they're they're big influencers, and hopefully they will swing the uh, you know the, the 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 learning to the to the right place. So again, I'm I'm optimistic. I think there's there's uh, there's this this wonderful thing that happens when people collaborate, and it's so immediate. Yeah. You see emails, you see social media mention mentioning uh, all of these uh, procedures, the biohacking that gets dispersed immediately there's a, if there's a new study uh, somewhere it's in within seconds that it gets published everybody sees it it's it's amazing in all corners of the world so that is that is pretty powerful but it also comes with a caveat because you need to like you get bombarded with articles left and right but you need some sort of validation if they are accurate or not because ai it's known that is being generating articles back and forth but you need actually uh, is this stuff true or not right right that's where the the wearables make a big difference that's where when people actually see and and, and i can attest that that became uh, a, a game changer for me once I started to measure my glucose level, my ketone levels, and I could see, you know, if I do X, Y, Z, I can raise my ketones. I f- not only I feel because feeling is kind of subjective, but when you can measure it, I'm a, I'm an engineer. When you can measure uh, your ketone levels, sure. well, you know it's working. You know, there's no there's no there's no denying. So you know, I think that that's that's that, that's what would would make big big biggest difference. You know being able to, to uh, have these technologies widely available and cheap enough, you know, for people to use. And if, and if you have those, it's easier for people to actually validate it, even not being an engineer and being like systems oriented, but then you can actually see this. This is not good for you. Let's say the article, but then you have like the, like the thing that is measuring and saying it is good for you because mm-hmm. this is your ketone level, that type of approach. I think it's useful. And if it's cheap, so people can use it and see the point of buying it. I think it's a wonderful thing because they now can see and start self-educating themselves. 
across what they're seeing across the board. And it's not right. true because this is true. This is what I'm seeing from my body. Right. Exactly. You know, in a very easy way to read. Um, I, we mentioned before that age rate company, and there are several others that do some, something similar. Uh, if you do all sorts of protocols and, and you measure your cellular age and you see that you're five years younger, uh, obviously that's working. <laughs> so, you know, it's undeniable when you see the results in, a, in an app. And that's a very, everybody can understand that, you know, their seller age is less. Well, I'm doing something right. I should be doing the same thing. I should continue doing that. <laughs> and if it gets worse, well, you know, I should, uh, I should reduce my amount of alcohol consumption or, you know, uh, junk food or whatever it is. So I, I think, I think you're absolutely right. Yeah. It starts, it starts and ends with people. And I, that, that's the main key point is becoming self-aware and then you start making your decisions and then industries will change because they need to, they need revenue. Right. They will respond to it. Yeah. The consumer demands uh, will will determine that. You see that in soft drinks right now. We see a lot of choices with no sugar, um, which is obviously a response to to changing tastes, you know, less sugary drinks that are being sold and people prefer something more, you know, uh, just water with CO2, for example. So, yeah, it is it is it is happening. You know? and, I, and I think I think the the. The uh, uh, the momentum is is positive on on the on that uh, on that front. I I'm glad that that we're doing this podcast. I think going back to the education, this is this is what it takes: is more uh, people being aware and more communication and uh, good information and some resources of experts that will be able to help quite a few people that currently do not really uh, monitor their their body and and uh, are not living their full potential don't have as much energy that, as they should so i i'm glad that we're doing this uh once again doing a podcast i'm glad that uh, we ran into each other here in europe and uh look forward to talking even more uh i as i mentioned as i get deeper into my studies in biomedical engineering i'll be able to bring in some interesting uh, findings that uh, that are, are the latest and greatest. There's, there's a lot going on. Um, I think it's really the, the, the last thought that I want to leave people with is that to me, I see as, as, as the next big revolution is really the, the, the bio, biomedical or gene modification is the next frontier. You know, it's, I saw, I see, the iPhone or the, the the internet was the previous one, and then the mobile and the and the, the social connectedness with the mobile became uh, a big uh, influence in people's lives. And I think the next one is being able to manipulate genes for all kinds of things, for longevity and, and diseases, and and uh, for some nefarious reasons too. But I think in general, it's going to be positive. Uh, so just one one last recommendation I've mentioned before, but life force book will give people a taste of what's coming and it's really really good uh reading uh it will it will really be good resources for people just go to fernandoaries.com um just my name no no spaces no no uh no hyphenation just fernandoaries.com and there's links there to what i do and some biohacking stuff and linkedin and that sort of thing uh and uh you know if you want to be in contact with me you can reach me via the website